Actually, I've got an LA playlist of really bad, cheesy 80s. Well, we got to tell us. Because I'm LA. be something you, you're proud of. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, yeah. it's got Miami Vice theme. The Heat is on. Really? By Glenn Can you Fred. verify yeah. that? Or is it actually? Uh, Super Tramp. Okay. Daft yeah. Punk. I mean, this is like, uh, there's a lot of Trevor Hall. When you're running, are you trying to run away from this music? You're stuck on Mars. What music do you want to be listening to? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go with the, the Martian uh, kind of uh, the essence of Martian. I'll say Life on Mars, David Bowie. How do the Coen brothers communicate what they want? They show me a reel or a scene or whatever they have, but honestly, uh, they don't so much communicate what they want. It's until there's music in front of them, until I give them something. That's when the conversation begins, and then we begin to talk about why this works, why it doesn't work, or what have you. But they really don't like talking about what their movies are about or what they mean. I usually say uh, Vertigo uh, by Bernard Terman. One of the most amazing col collaborations you know, between a director and a composer ever. And it's basically Bernard Terman's music, uh, especially for Hitchcock, and his, also his later work for Brian De Palma, and, and his sort of later, more extreme scores are, are really the reason I, I got interested in, in film music. Right now I'm feeling like psycho. I was thinking about it the other day, and I, I, I think maybe The Third Man. I think it makes that film feel timeless. You can still watch it today, and like the story behind him is crazy. He was playing in a restaurant where Cal Reed would eat every day, filming, and he just got him, you know, great decision by a director, like really unusual to say, I want you to score my film. Scored great. the film, great. became a celebrity, made loads of money, and decided he wanted to go back to playing in a restaurant. He bought the restaurant. So it's now in his restaurant, and then he just played the zither in the corner. I like that. Is that. He only did one score. What a score. Well, I'm a sucker for a bit of Thomas Newman, me. It probably was responsible for getting me motivated as a, uh, to try and become a film composer. So I would say The Shawshank Redemption. When you say that, the first thing that comes into my head is Planet of the Apes. I well, love Hold on a second. Jerry Your Goldsmith. One. No, no, Jerry Goldsmith. <laughs> Jerry Goldsmith. I just love that score so much. It's so inventive and so crazy and just fun in all the right ways. Um, Hans Zimmer, without a doubt. Hans gave me, gave me a chance. In fact, he kicked my ass so that I didn't have any other option than to come to America and give this a go. And he was very generous with his support and his knowledge, and I'll never forget that. You know, honestly, I'd probably say Brian Eno. It would be somewhere between Benny Goodman, John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith, Max Steiner, Bernard Herrmann, and I would throw in Louis Prima, too. <laughs> somewhere in that group. Well, yeah, um, for, for film music, definitely Herman and uh, Morricone, I would say, as well. But, but there, are so, there are so many other you know, influences that come into play. There's something about Ennio Morricone, which has been such a massive influence on me. People don't really talk about it, but he used sound in a really inventive, experimental way. And he also had this insane work ethic, never stop working and we'll just keep producing stuff. And I have this thing called the Ennio Morricone principle, which is a way to justify doing too much work for a while. Well, I actually grew up making movies first, and it wasn't until I realized how much fun it was sort of finding the music that fit the movies, the stop motion animation films that I was making at nine or 10 years old, and not just putting it behind it so it would play the entire thing straight through. It was I was editing cassette tapes and doing crazy things like music editing at a time when you just had cassette tapes. And I think that that was like the germ of it. I never would have guessed even at that time that I'd be doing this, but I think that's where it all started. I loved the process so much. Mm -hmm. 